You love doing that, don't you? It's just part of the job. <laughs> Best part, right? June 8th, 2023 meeting of the Lawrence Redevelopment Commission is hereby called to order. The chair has determined that we have a quorum and uh, first order of business will be to have the approval of the minutes. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. Okay, we have an indication that everyone has. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second? Second. Moved and seconded. We need to do roll call, I think. Yes, we will. And um, Reggie, can you hear us? Oh, oh, Reggie's on, good. I can. Okay, perfect. Okay, roll call vote. <laughs> Jerry Clifford? <Hello. laughs> yes. Jared Klein? Yes. Melissa Howard? Yes. Reggie McGregor? Yes. And Cheryl Sullivan? Yes. Okay. Can we turn up Reggie's volume in any way? I think we can. Well, we're on. If we're on, you have we? to, Yeah, it'd be him. So we can put those back to the on? white line and do that one. Those are just our microphones. Okay. So he'll have to do it on his computer side. Okay. Can you hear us now? Can you speak a little louder? Reggie? Yeah, I see the uh, conference room. Can you hear me better? That's Perfect. Better. We can hear you better now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, the second order of business would be the approval of claims and purchase orders for payment. We have um, claims totaling $20,463.84. Um, Dan, do you have any comments concerning these? None. No. Um, with no comments, I would ask the commissioners uh, the only thing i think is important for the commissioners to know note is almost everything you see related to brownfields we get reimbursed of yes. our grants okay if there are no questions i'll entertain a motion for approval motion second second Moved and seconded a roll call vote jerry clifford Yes. Jared Klein? Yes. Melissa Howard? Yes. Reggie McGregor? Yes. Cheryl Sullivan? Yes. Thank you. And we don't have an RDC financial update. We do not have an update today because Tyler, or Humphrey's on vacation and the city is having a major audit start tomorrow morning as it has Tyler tied up. I will say that I have reviewed them. Other than the claims you just approved, there's no substantial change at all to our financial package from what was delivered last month. Uh, I will be sure that we get a, a comprehensive update in June because the TIF payment should be in for the last taxing entity for June distribution. So we'll get that update in the next statement. Thank you, Mr. Zerner. And since you're speaking, why don't you just continue? Thank you. Uh, CSX drainage update, it has not started to my knowledge, though I did not get by there today. I expect it to start any day, and they only expect it to take about 30 days to wrap up. So when I'm in town next week, I will drive by that again and follow up with that. No problems to my knowledge. I think the other thing was going on, they had to coordinate with CSX for a safety flagger to be on board, and that was around CSX's schedule. So that should be getting done right away. EPA Brownfields grant, uh, a lot of activity on that. As you know, we were awarded that grant. At least I think you all know we were awarded that grant. I think we announced that. Uh, if not, we officially did get the letter. We received the maximum 400,000 for the next four years. There's a lot of detail work, as you'd expect, with the federal government going along with that. We have to either issue RFPs or demonstrate that if we want to stay with Bruce Carter that their fees are in line with the current fee schedules that are allowable. I would prefer to stay with Bruce Carter. They've done a phenomenal job and they did help us get the grant and they've been invaluable in administrating that. So I'm starting to, I have a phone call, an email actually with the EPA's project manager, Linda Mangum tomorrow morning to help me understand all the procurement and submission requirements and work order requirements that we have to comply with to put this grant in motion. The grant actually takes effect October 1 and is good for four years. Our grant expires, our current grant expires the end of September and there is about $48,000 left in that, but unfortunately it's almost all petroleum-based project investigations. And we've investigated about all the petroleum sites that I'm aware of in Lawrence, so we probably won't be using much of it. There is a conference, the National Brownfields Conference, I've been invited to to attend in Detroit, and they will pay for it out of our grant. 
I don't think I'm going to attend at this moment in time. I, I just don't think there's enough benefit at the moment for everything we have going on and given the help we have in other arenas. Um, but should I change my mind, I'll let you know and we'll work through that. Okay. EV charging station grant, uh, while she's sitting here, I wanna thank Corey Korn, ever involved in everything with the city. Uh, she and David Hoffman have been working through that with me, though Corey's playing a bigger role uh, we had our, uh, we've had a progress call. Uh, we've had a kickoff meeting. Everything's in full motion. One of the things that you all will be receiving from me probably tomorrow, or if not tomorrow, the first of the week, I'll be sending a letter over Corey's signature and my signature out to every department and every commission in the city um, that has a link to a survey relative to EV charging. I'm asking that each of you take the survey. I'm asking each commissioner, each council member to take that survey. I want everybody, nobody to be in a vacuum. I want everybody to know we're doing this. Uh, we're also uh, sending to every commission uh, relative to the city. We're sending to the FHRA, to their board. I'm hoping, I'm gonna ask Roger Smith to distribute it through the school corporation. We've got it on our website. It's all gonna be open till uh, July 4th. It's important that we get this out in front of everybody in the city we can to take this survey relative to their interests and, and perceptions to EVs and EV charging in the city. So you can expect that to me no later than the first next week. If, you're, if you can't wait, it's on the city website right now and you can, you can grab it and take it. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that uh, we're being pretty aggressive with that and I think it's going really well so far. 4399 Shadeland Avenue property closing. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm just gonna take the next two items and ask uh, Adam to take care of that for you. He's done a great job of getting out of front of both of these. And Adam, I thank you for your effort. My pleasure, thank you. Um, the agreement for 4399, uh, I believe Dan circulated all that uh, yesterday. To I did. You guys to have a look at. Um, yeah. So this is, in compliance with the bid that we received, it is for a purchase price of $126,200. Uh, $45,000 will be paid uh, up front as a down payment. And then we are also taking a mortgage and a promissory note to receive the remaining payments over time. Um, that is payments annually, July 1, 2024, July 1, 2025, July 1, 2026, and July 1, 2027. And there's also a 5% interest rate associated with that payment over time. So you will get, including the interest, a little bit, another almost $10,000 in interest over that, over that period. That was in, in line with what they bid. So the only comments I have to make is that uh, keep in mind that I think we've got a great proposal that'll really clean that up. It's agreed to work with Drone Deck and the property next door to help them have what they need to work with and uh, that we were originally willing to sell this for a dollar. And uh, I think this has worked out really well for us. So I would ask for your approval of this so Adam can close this with the title company. Would there be any language that we would need to have or would it be somewhere else in regards to the, the performance requirements of the site? Uh, that The city has taken care of that, I believe, relative to uh, when we issued the permits and handled it in that manner, Jared. So we don't need to have any language in this no. regard. No. So I would appreciate a motion to accept this agreement and direct Adam to close. I make a motion. Second. Second. Motion seconded. Do a roll call vote. Jerry Clifford? Yes. Jared Klein? Yes. Melissa Howard? Yes. Reggie McGregor? Yes. Cheryl Sullivan? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. On the next item, Tim 160 56th Street, uh, Adams uh, produced a purchase agreement uh, that outlined all the things that we uh, told SMS we wanted last month in terms of site plan, rendering, floor plan, uh, scope of work, exterior storage, hours that they're gonna be in operation, all those things we outlined, Adam has put into a purchase agreement. I'll let you take it from here, Adam. Yeah, we, we sent that over to the uh, prospective buyer. They are reviewing it. They are, they are actively uh, engaged in this. They, I talked to the, the broker today. Um, their principal, or his principal, is 
out of town, they have a meeting on Monday to go over the purchase agreement and we could have a signed agreement as early as next week. I asked them if it'd be fair to say that we would have, definitely have an assigned agreement by next meeting. Uh, and he, he thought that would, would not be a problem. Um, this is the one where they have the 60 days to, where we have to approve their, all the things Dan just, just walked through. Uh, so that is what they are working through through now to get their site plan all, all set up. So just to reiterate and not be redundant, but this purchase agreement says we are willing to sell the property subject to the verbalized terms and their demonstration of what they wanna build is acceptable to the RDC. So just, we, we approved the purchase agreement uh, for Adam's drafting, but we have not technically approved the sale until we see exactly what it is they present next time around. And this is this is the truck service? That's correct. Sure. Do we have any idea, <clears throat> I thought of this after the last meeting, any idea how long semis are going to be there? Is this short term? Short term, well? short term repairs and not supposed to be any stored in front at all. In, so. in front, but I mean, it could some be under work for months or is this a... I don't think we know that, but that's one of the things we've asked them to come back with is ex expressed exactly what their operations are gonna be. Okay. Yeah, so we'll get that at that time. We don't know at this time on the, you, you mentioned broker. So are, is there, are we paying a broker fee or paying the broker? We are not paying a broker fee. They, to my knowledge. Uh, no, yeah, it's in here that we are not paying a broker. And I, I maybe misspoke when I said broker, the, the representative that they had at the last meeting, Adam Hoff, I don't know if he's a... He is a broker, but he's working for them. He's not working for us. Gotcha, okay. Anything else on 10160? I have nothing on the Mills Freegy dedicated parking status. Uh, ready grant, uh, this is an important one. Uh, we have a lot going on in the ready grant, ready to grant pursuit update. Uh, this is a, a new phase of ready that is totally different than the last time around. If you remember, we weren't able to participate the last time because the region selected white, white River projects. We don't have the White River coming through the city of Lawrence. Uh, the mayors across Indiana really threw a shoe on that, and this time uh, there's uh, been uh, 500 million, I believe it is, appropriated for ready this time around that they're going to distribute across the state. Each city has to still submit within a region, but each city gets to submit a project. And the interesting thing is there's no limit to the submission. That doesn't mean they're gonna give you an unlimited amount, but we can submit for anything we wanna submit. I have HWC teed up by the end of June, end of July, to give us a budget for the engineering and construction of the trades district. Right. It's my intention to submit the trades district as our ready application. Uh, Corey and I are attending a meeting, I think it's the 22nd in South Bend, where we expect IDC to issue all the ready rules and regulations and requirements and submission dates and forms and formats. Uh, I have a meeting scheduled for immediately thereafter with uh, Mike and Jamie Snyder with the MEK group. Uh, I've worked with them extensively on some major proposals. Uh, just one little snippet, they were the ones that found all the money to create Westgate at Crane. Uh, they're extremely good at video production, uh, putting together proposals. Uh, one of the things I may be bringing to you at our July meeting is a request to engage them to, submit, to prepare a professionally prepared submission for ready for this grant because I think it's possible we could get 10 or 15 million dollars towards the trades district. Uh, but they're not gonna do that without some wild power. So uh, we're working very heavily on ready to grant and I think it's possible we could take our two million dollars and use it as a match and get some really significant dollars in exchange. 80, 20 on two million dollars would be 10 million. Uh, so that's the type of thing I'm, that Corey and I are working on towards ready to. They do expect to issue that by the end of the year. So that, that could be a great Christmas present. <laughs> yeah. uh, at this time, I don't really think I have anything else uh, relative to old business. Uh, we do, under new business every year annually, you have to approve the TIF legislation and the use of TIF. That time has come. I'll let Adam take you through that. You want to do the resolution or the new residential TIF first? Either way you want to do it. Um, 
Let's do them out, out of order, uh, just because there might be more discussion on the residential TIF. Um, resolution number one, dash 2023. Uh, every year you have to make a determination on your next year's projected TIF and expenses. Um, and what I passed out right before the meeting was the those projections that we got from Tyler and from Bob Swentz, the municipal advisor, uh, showing those uh, expected revenues and expenses. They are all below the 200% threshold, uh, so you do not need any additional approvals from the council. Um, the resolution is signed up or geared up as in the past to pass through all of the assessed value, uh, but I can answer any questions that are it's related to that. Actually, this is something we do every year almost as a formality. Uh, we, can, we can spend any time on it you'd like, but there's really nothing here. Uh, it basically affirms the amount of money that Tyler, or that, that has been in your projections that Humphrey's given us every month. So I would appreciate a motion to- I have, I have just one, one question. Under number three, it says the secretary of the commission is directed to record this resolution. Is that the elected secretary for the commission or the recording secretary for the commission? Uh, probably the recording secretary. Recording, because they have Joe Murphy listed on here. So. Well, I, I see his name at the bottom, but that was my question is, it doesn't say recording under number three, should it? Do we care? Uh, um, no. Okay. Thank you. No, we don't care. But that's, but that's a good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One I'd never come up with, Cheryl. So if we could get a motion to approve this, I would appreciate it for Jerry to sign it. Second. Second. And roll call vote. Jerry Clifford? Yes. Jared Klein? Yes. Melissa Howard? Yes. Reggie McGregor? I said yes. Okay, thank you. Cheryl Sullivan? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next. I don't want to take it. Um, so one of the major legislative uh, happenings this past session was residential housing and how to incentivize and otherwise generate more more housing in Indiana. One of those uh, bills that kind of came out of that idea is this residential TIF. Residential TIF's been around for a couple of years, but they have made the requirements much easier to comply with and to establish residential TIF districts. So one of the things uh, that I did was prepare a generic sort of Q&A on all the residential TIFs. That's what I, I passed out right before the meeting. Um, and, and Reggie, I can get you a, a copy as well if, if you haven't seen it, but I can I can walk you through or we can talk about whatever you want to talk about with, with the residential TIF. So right now, I don't think we have an application at this moment in time. Uh, one of the things that Lawrence is uh, saddled with, if you don't, if you aren't aware of it, is we don't have any excess sewer capacity. So uh, Arbor Homes was the last, and, and Corhan's development was the last major area that we've approved for development. Um, we have probably six different developers lined up for projects right now that we're telling them they're three to five years out before we have sufficient sewer capacity. But one of the things that could help that sewer capacity and could help with that development is the use of this TIF so that we could capture the funds coming out of those areas to uh, put in the TIF and pay for that infrastructure. Uh, with the council's current position on things, I don't think that's likely at the moment, uh, but we asked Adam to review and provide this information to you so that in the future we might have it in our toolbox. I really think that's all the discussion there is at the moment, unless anybody wants to know anything particular about it. No. Any other questions? No. All right. Uh, if you all remember, uh, know about the project we just talked about, the 10160 Pendleton Pike parcel with SMS, I am starting to look at one more parcel I found that might be really neat to develop. It's similar, it sits in right away, and it also sits on 56th Street. So as you go over the overpass here by Harrison Ford, you start, start to look, there's a great big patch of grass on the left sitting right out in the middle between Waste Management's site and 56th Street. It's about 1.1 acres. 
uh, that we're spending a lot of money as a city mowing and maintaining that could be a really nice commercial site. Uh, it would also take council approval to uh, make that on the market, just like we did 10160. Uh, right now, we can't even get on the agenda with the council. Uh, so uh, that's going to have to be delayed for a while. But uh, I am starting to look at that. And depending on how things go in the next few months, I may decide to get that surveyed and pursue that as a potential development. I have no other business other than, uh, as always, I think she has so much to offer. I'd like to see if Corey would like to advise you on anything from the farmer's market starting tonight to whatever else. Thank you, Dan. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, farmer's market is going on, and so we have 40 vendors there this evening. So when you are done here, please go over to the Fort Bend Cultural Campus because People just keep adding and wanting to be part of our market, so we are so grateful about that. Um, Dan did mention um, a little bit earlier about the survey. If you are anxious and want to see it before you get the letter, to find it on our website, if you go to City News and scroll down to the article that's posted there about the EV charging stations, it's at the bottom of that, just in case you have trouble finding that. And lastly, Arts for Lawrence is hosting the Juneteenth celebration on the 17th, Saturday the 17th, from four to nine. And there's an after party after that with um, Active Foo, who starts performing at 9.30. And we are proud to partner with Arts for Lawrence on that event. So thank you and look forward to seeing you out and about in the community. Thank you, Corey. So I'll take, I'll take any questions on anything from the group. Reggie, where are you? Oh, you're on mute. Mute. Can you unmute? Sorry. Columbia, South Carolina. Wow, what a great place. Wow. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Anything from you, Reggie? Any questions from anyone? Hey, I just wonder on the uh, EV charging on the website, do we have like a picture so people can just get a get a visual what we what we talking about? Yes, it actually has a description of the project. It's pretty extensive that we approved. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all for me. Thank you. Dan, I have one that I'd, I'd like to. Originally, when Ready was introduced by our governor, it was the idea behind Ready was that it would it would, it would be a, a regional collaboration. Regional stimulus. Between, for example, the the, the donut counties of around Marion County, et cetera. Um, with our trades district, I mean, the original concept would it would be that it would not just benefit Lawrence. Well, uh, it would benefit the, the entire community. And we believe that's the case with the vocational trades and jobs creation and being the gateway to Indianapolis from the east side. So we think that case can be made very easily. That's where I was headed, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that we could get some collaboration from others. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And it has to be submitted through the region anyway, so they'll have to indicate their buy-in. Super. Thank you very much. The region has expanded hugely. Um, the region, it used to be you had to be a paying member in the region. That's no longer the case. But now the region goes all the way from Greenfield to the Speedway. It, it basically cuts all the way through the north, the north, the central part of Indiana. Wait a minute. We, let me drop back. The region that he's referring to is central Indiana. Yeah. If you're not ready was the whole state was divided up into regions ours being central uh, so yeah, we would have a we would have a, a lot better chance of getting a grant for the trades district with with regional well we have to have regional cooperation that's correct thank you thank you that's all i have uh, anybody else cheryl yes sir oh. they're all shaking their heads <laughs> Well, with that, I'll entertain a motion to, to uh, adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's roll call have, vote. Jerry, <laughs> Jerry yes. Clifford, Jared Klein, Melissa Howard, Reggie, Cheryl. Yes. Okay. Thank you all for being here. Okay, let's go to the farmer's market.